you know, living my best life in Sweden, <laughs> hanging out with my friends every day. I was working, I was making a living for myself. And then when I moved over so young to the States, it kind of hit me like a train. Like I started to question everything, like the lifestyle, not being able to work every day, a new culture, new language, new friends. So that's when my anxiety kind of hit me because I never been that much lonely with my own thoughts. So mm -hmm. missing family and friends. But the hardest for me was that I was kind of missing my meaning, you know, my meaning in life waking up. Because when you start living for someone else's dream, you kind of lose your own dreams and goals and the meaning with your path. But then I always came back to the reason why am I, why am I here? And that's because of one thing and that's because of love. You're listening to Breaking the Ice Podcast, a podcast that I created in 2020 to connect women within the hockey world. My name's Devin Dodero, my husband's Charlie Dodero, and we've played literally all over the world. We have two kids, two dogs, and let's just say hockey has taken my world by storm. What I've learned is that this community and these experiences are very specific, and you should not have to go through this alone. Through this podcast, I share the tools, resources, do's, don'ts, and what's helped me along the way while continuing to learn from each and every one of you. So lace them up and tune in for episodes twice a month and make sure to follow the page on Instagram at breaking the ice pod. Hello everybody. Happy Wednesday. Happy whatever day you were listening to this on. I always want to say good morning because I assume people when they see there's a new episode downloaded in the morning, but it might be evening. It might be midday. So wherever and whenever you're listening to this episode, I am happy that you're here today. I am back home in my house in Idaho from overseas. The sun is shining. The weather is sweet. <laughs> Besides the eclipse that happened yesterday, which I feel like, I don't know about you guys, but I was feeling a little bit off. I kind of feel the effects of it. So besides that... I'm so happy to be home, I'm so happy to be back with my friends and just be surrounded by a support system and have all of these things for my kids to do. And really right now, it's just back to the grind, back to getting into a routine, which I love and I crave because during the hockey season, I feel like we don't really have much of a routine. So that's kind of what's going on with me right now. And I was so, so excited and happy to finally do this recording with Emily. We have been talking for, seriously, I think we've been trying to schedule this for like a year now. And then I was abroad and she was home. So it was just, we, it was hard to find the times to do a call because we both have kids and just wasn't aligning. So I was like, okay, hey, let's wait till I am back home in North America and it'll be easier for us to coordinate. And she did not disappoint you guys. This was such a good episode. I absolutely love this conversation with her and I know you will too. I think it is so fun and interesting to learn about other cultures. And I think people from North America that go over to Europe for the hockey season then Europe to North America. And so I feel like a lot of the expats that we've had on the podcast have been expats that are North Americans living in Europe. We haven't had a ton of expats that are European living in North America. I hopefully said that right. That was a little bit confusing. She was such a perfect person to interview for this because when she moved to North America, you guys, she hardly spoke any English. Her English is seamless She's hilarious, and we talked about really just all of the things. Just like we do when we go over to Europe, she also feels those feelings of being lonely and feeling isolated and not having that core support system around her, especially with a little girl. And we chat about what her experience has been like living in the U.S., in a new culture, with new friends, and how she really had to shift her mindset in regards to this lifestyle. She also had her baby in the U.S., 
We're always talking about having babies in Europe, but she is a European who had her baby in the United States. So we talk about what her experience was like doing that here. And we also get into all of the hilarious culture differences between Europeans and Americans. This is always super fun to talk about. I think it's the most fun to talk about with the opposite culture because things that feel normal to us or normal to them don't feel normal when you flip flop it, like because it's just not what either one of us is used to. So we got into all of our favorite culture differences and all around this was just such a positive, uplifting conversation with also a lot of realness and vulnerability And I'm really excited for you guys to listen. So thank you so much for pressing play this morning and being here. I appreciate it more than you know. I can't believe you're back in the States, though, from your European travel. Oh, my God. I mean, I'm sure you feel the same way. It's like just when you Yeah, we're like the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. You get back to your home country and you're just like, yeah, finally. Yeah. Have you gone on your first Target run? I have. I've been there a couple times. I actually haven't gone too crazy yet, but (laughs) that's not to say it's not coming soon. Do you love Target? I do. I I, first, when I came here, I didn't understand that. And no, I just feel like it's the best store ever. It truly is so good. The worst is like going in there and not knowing what you need. Like you're just going to like walk around and then that's when you get into like some major trouble (laughs) yeah you're so Uh, right yeah I'm super excited you're here I did not know this was your first like English speaking debut which you posted about on Instagram so I'm honored but I would love to just start off and have you share with me about you and what your journey has kind of looked like and then obviously we'll you know go into detail and and pick things apart. But yeah, I'd love for you to just introduce yourself. So my name is Emily Raquel, and I'm married to Ricard Raquel. And yeah, we are Swedish. (laughs) We both are Swedish. And I often get that question, like, how did you guys meet? Is he American? Are you Swedish? But no, we both are Swedish. And we met in Sweden. Um, But we have been in two teams in NHL. And Ricard started really young. He moved over from Sweden when he was 17. And then he played junior hockey in Michigan. And from there, he got drafted to Anaheim and played in AHL. And then from there, NHL. So he was in Anaheim, California for 10 years, which is crazy. (laughs) And I was there for six years with him. And now we are in Pittsburgh Penguins. And this is our third season. So I lived in the States for almost nine years now. It's not a bad place to uh, get a contract. Anaheim, you have the sun out all year, yep. like California. And I'm sure that was fun. Like being Swedish in your first place, you're really going is California. Yeah, it was crazy. And I was also so young when I moved over. Um, and I think about that all the time. Like if I moved over when I was a little bit older, it would have been easier. But yeah, mm-hmm. it, was, it was it was crazy. I'd never been to California before. So it truly was something new. <laughs> yeah. You mentioned that when you first came here, you were 22 and you hardly spoke any English. So mm-hmm. can you describe like what that feeling was like for you, knowing that you were going to go somewhere that was so foreign to you and maybe feeling like you wouldn't be understood? Yeah. So in the beginning, when I first came to to use, I barely spoke any English. And we often hear that Swedish people are good in English. And I you know, like I knew the basics. Hi, how are you? Where are you from? But the hardest part for me was actually to mingle and get to know people on a deeper level. And I think that's so important in this life too, to get to know people on a deeper level because you kind of need them. And also, you know, like showing my personality on English. I will always say to some girls, like, I wish you knew the Swedish Emily. I'm actually kind of funny. <laughs> you know, it took it probably took me three years before I actually could say that I'm like 95% myself on English as a Swede but today I can kind of make the same jokes and bring out my personality but it truly was so hard as a European to adjust to that and especially in a bigger group to speak and be heard and I remember in the beginning my first team party I will barely say anything because I was so scared of getting misunderstood 
or I was scared of people making fun of my accent or laugh if I said the wrong things or pronounce anything wrong. And I was also, like I said, so young and that team, when we, when I arrived, Ricard was one of the youngest and everyone, I felt like they were so old. Right. And that has kind of given me another respect and perspective to really treat and understand people travel, traveling abroad, how hard it is with a new language. Mm-hmm. And the best people you will meet are the ones that will kind of help you find the right world when you're standing there trying to talk and, you know, like, oh, I was walking on the street and then like this side, what is it called? The sidewalk. <laughs> and, you know, like people are helping you instead of like looking at you like you're an alien or something. Right, right. But that was, that was truly so hard to make those kind of deeper connections. And I, I now I, I speak very fast, but in the beginning I didn't. And I find that most Americans do. They kind of speak fast. Speak fast, yeah. So kind of in my head, they're speaking fast. And in my head, I'm translating everything. And then at the same time, I need to speak back. (laughs) It was just (laughs) truly so hard. And we Swedish people always end up talking about that. Like, oh, do you get exhausted? Like after like a full night out, like we truly get tired from speaking a lot of English not now but my first year I was truly like oh I needed like a break because it was hard to keep up totally I think I've actually think I've said this in an episode before but sometimes like for me when I go abroad there's people from a lot of different countries and everybody has a little bit of a different accent so -hmm. it's funny when we're like all hanging out together because I feel like I have to be like like you know when you're with girls and each person's like adding in things I'm like okay it takes a lot of mental energy to like really like just make sure that you're comprehending what everyone's saying and then like responding correctly. So like I can relate in that aspect, like even though it's different because your first language is Swedish and then you're learning and, you know, speaking a completely different language and then that's a little bit different, but yeah, I think it's, it's can be tiring sometimes. Yeah. going And and especially I kind of, always thought about like imagine if I went into labor my first year in the U.S. like now I went into labor six years later and I was comfortable with the language right but still like all those kind of different words in medicine what they're saying and to me I will be I will just I will just die in labor (laughs) how did you learn English so quickly I don't I actually don't know. My first friend was Finnish and I have to say that her English was really good. So I feel like as a Swede, if you come over and your first deep friends are talking English, you learn better. Hmm. If you only like hang out with a lot of Swedes, it takes longer. But my first really good friend, she was Finnish and her English was amazing. And Mm -hmm. she also started, she couldn't, she barely spoke any English when she came so she also started from the the, the bottom and so her and I became really close and I feel like just talking just talking talking and not be afraid but you truly were so afraid in the beginning it was so hard and just just what we were saying earlier just the fact of being misunderstood I was just so scared because when you first come you want so much to be friends with everyone Mm -hmm. and the worst the biggest fear was to be misunderstood and not people to laugh about you or like, Oh, what is she saying? And I can assume like the first few years was probably a little bit challenging too. just feeling Mm -hmm. like, like you said, you can't 100% be yourself. And I think, and I'm curious if you can relate to this, but a lot of people that go to different countries for the hockey season often say if they're on a team that takes very little imports, like one or two people basically that speak the same language, you know, fluently, you're from the same country. Um, It can be hard. Did you like isolating too? And sometimes that can be really difficult seasons for people because they just don't have that one person that they can kind of have that like seamless, you know, banter with and everything. Did you find that the first couple of years that you went abroad? Like, did you have feelings of being isolated and being so far away from home? So I I definitely always, when it was those kind of bigger team dinners, like on a Friday night, I was sitting home by myself and I was like, oh, I really want to go to this dinner. But I always, in the back of my head, I was thinking like, 
but I'm so scared of saying the wrong things or do the wrong things. Um, so definitely in the beginning, I was super scared of going to bigger events, dinners, like it was so many events that I never thought it would be. And then a lot of people always say like, oh, you Swedish people always stick together and hang out and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, it's it's a reason because of it, because yeah. it's like close. It kind of is the only family you have. And it's also, it's so nice to have someone that's Swedish in the team. And we've been really lucky with having a lot of Swedes in the teams we've been in. Um, it's always kind of so comf like when you walk over and you see Sweden, you just like talk Swedish. It's like really nice, but yeah, I definitely was, was staying more home than I should have in the beginning because I was scared of that for sure. What are your feelings like when the hockey season's about to start back up again? Like, are you excited to go back to the U S do you feel that feeling of like, Oh, you know, I'm, I'm love this lifestyle. There's great elements of it, but I wish I could stay home. Like, what are your feelings about all of that? You know, because you are really far from home. Yeah. Just hop on a plane and see your family and your friends. Yeah. And um, so before this, just to go back, like before this lifestyle, I never had any type of anxiety. I was so young. I was, you know, living my best life in Sweden, <laughs> hanging out with my friends every day. I was working. I was making a living for myself. And then when I moved over so young to the States, it kind of hit me like a train. Like I started to question everything, like the lifestyle, not being able to work every day, a new culture, new language, new friends. So that's when my anxiety kind of hit me because I never been that much lonely with my own thoughts. So mm -hmm. missing family and friends. But the hardest for me was that I was kind of missing my meaning, you know, my meaning in life waking up, because when you start living for someone else's dream, you kind of lose your own dreams and goals, and the meaning with your path. But then I always came back to the reason why am I why am I here? And that's because of one thing. And that's because of love. Um, mm -hmm. the feeling it, like the love I had and have for Ricard was just stronger than anything else. And when I met him, I knew this was my soulmate. So I knew that long distance all the way from Sweden would never work. And I also knew that Ricard wasn't moving back to Sweden. His journey was far away from over. Mm -hmm. So I kind of knew if I wanted this to work, I knew that I needed to find a way to kind of switch my attitude to this lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And that's like what I did instead of, you know, feeling sorry for myself that I was all alone and my friends was home having fun. <laughs> right. Um, I just stopped being embarrassed. And when I say embarrassed, I was, you know, I was kind of ashamed living for someone else. And I was so used to make my own living. And I turned around and started to see all the positive things and, you know, who got the opportunity to live in the U.S. and see and do all the things we get to do and experience, you know, to travel and meet amazing people along the way. And also just to learn the language and your guys' culture is amazing too. And I also kind of asked myself always like, do I want to look back at my time here in the States and see that I'm feeling sorry for myself? Or do I want to look back and see a strong, independent woman that made the best of this adventure and the journey along the way? So I think that was kind of my game changer for everything and for the lifestyle and my anxiety to make my own meaning in this lifestyle. And instead of trying to push the lifestyle away, I mm -hmm. started to ride with it. And I think that's the key, just to embrace it and every day enjoy it. And I also think even though Ricard is the one playing hockey, I'm a part of the game too. And I'm kind of a brick in the game too. <laughs> and that I know that his success is also because of me. And in the beginning, I didn't see it like that at all. I just saw him playing hockey and I'm sitting in the stands. But today we are actually a team. Um, so that's truly been life changing for me. And it, I, I kind of had to grow into the lifestyle because I was so young. But also always remember that one day is going to be over and mm -hmm. me and Ricard will move back to Sweden and be old in our ho house there and just sit in front of a fireplace talking about this journey. So as of today, I always are excited to go back. I'm always excited for next adventure and 
you know, hop on the plane. It's kind of a routine now when the summer is over. I'm like, okay, let's go back. And you go into all this list, you shake off every box. And so today I'm definitely took me years, but today I'm probably the best headspace I ever been about this kind of lifestyle for sure. Oh, I love that so much. That was such a beautiful answer. And yeah, so many parts of that I just want to like touch on is that the women in this lifestyle, such a huge part of them even being able to do this, you know, especially like when you start a family, we don't get enough credit for everything that goes on in this lifestyle. And I think, I don't know about you, but I, I think it's a misconception of people outside of it, you know, like oh, you're chasing this guy and, you know, whatever people want to say. And sometimes that can like affect you. And you really have to look within and realize that like, I do so much and I sacrifice so much to be here. Like this isn't the easiest lifestyle, you know, like you don't just like living far away and not having that support system, especially if you're, you know, switching teams and you're throwing yourself into a whole new group of people, like as you're in that kind of pivotal stage in your life transitioning yeah. from your twenties to your thirties, which is a huge yeah. life transition. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think that women get enough credit. So I think that's amazing that you guys are able to like look within and realize that as a couple that like he is able to do this because of you. I mean, obviously, yeah. you know, they work hard at what they do as well, but yeah. they wouldn't be able to do it without yeah. the women. I just, like, I, I just started to never take any day for granted. And I lived every day as it was the last day of this like at that place because I knew we will never live her again Mm -hmm. you know we will never see as many beautiful places we saw in California we will never see all these sunsets and beaches and I remember one girl telling me when she got traded she was just like enjoy enjoy every you know moment of it because you're never going back like Mm -hmm. I probably never going back to the states ever yeah (laughs) once we go back I'm done okay right Yeah, we're not coaching so, now over here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's why I'm just like, I'm just trying to see, see it as the biggest adventure. And at the same time, just like that Ricard is, you know, playing in the best league in the world and doing what he loves the most. And I think it kind of hit me too, once we got our baby and our toddler, that I realized like, okay, he definitely could not have been a dad without me because if I lived in Sweden with our baby, he will never see us. So right. I, it truly hit me the most when we got kids for sure that mm-hmm. he wouldn't be able to, you know, be a parent at the same time playing at that high professional level like they do. Right. Definitely. Um, I want to go back to something that you said about just changing your mindset. Yep. What are the steps that you took to get there? Because when you are in a bad headspace and yeah, it's almost like you're putting the energy out and that's like the only thing that you're getting back is like bad energy. Right. And so sometimes it can be hard to get out of that negativity. How did, how did you do that? I just like count my blessings. I always try like the second I kind of feel sorry for myself or like, okay, another day, another sick toddler. And I'm by myself eating dinner by myself, doing everything in the house by myself. I always think just so many steps back like okay I need to count my blessings and how blessed we are to be able to even do this live in this house um it can it truly helps and I always look health wise like okay my family's healthy and you know that that truly helps and but it it was hard in the beginning too because I was so young and that's why I always look back like I kind of wish I was a little bit older when I (laughs) moved over but I because I think it would have been easier um but yeah and I also have the best support system for my family and Ricard is truly amazing like I could have never done this if it wasn't for him um he truly is like just one of a kind if it wasn't for him I would never be here because he's so amazing and his kind of support system too uh but definitely just like count my blessings that helps me all right you guys a hot topic that has always been and always will be in our hockey wives community is the topic of strollers 
I firsthand can tell you that I have experienced the stress when trying to decide the perfect stroller for my family. When I first had my child, I got a single stroller. And then obviously when I got pregnant again, I had to upgrade to a double and I just could not find a stroller that I was like in love with. There was always just some sort of issue. And I started doing a lot of research and I heard about the Zoe brand and I am obsessed. I ordered the stroller right before we came to Europe this year. So I got it back in December and It has honestly been a godsend, and I cannot believe how much more affordable it is than all of the other strollers that I've been buying. It's a side-by-side, and a lot of people think, okay, but how does that fit into the car? How does that get through European doorways? It is actually much smaller than any other stroller that I have owned in the past, and I actually wound up just ordering a single travel stroller for them as well because it fits in the overhead compartment in the plane, which is huge. We have a couple trips planned this summer, so I am going to be taking that probably for my youngest just so I can slide it above and be on my way. I know a lot of people get stressed about the strollers and I never recommend anything that I've not personally used or something that I don't personally love myself. And I swear by this stroller. It is just so easy to use, especially if you have a dog or two dogs like me. I can literally still push it with one hand And it's so easy to fold up, fit in the car. So anyways, I just wanted to give a shout out to Zoe because I really love the brand and I've been very impressed with their customer service as well. And they actually gave me a link for you guys to get $15 off your stroller if you wind up purchasing one. I'll put it in my bio and I'm also happy to answer any questions just because I know how overwhelming it is when deciding a stroller. So they have single strollers, double strollers, whatever you're searching for on the market and you will not regret it. All right, back to the episode. The kind of more with this lifestyle when you go through stuff, the kind of thicker you get. And I'm also like thankful, thankful for my journey here and this lifestyle because I never would have been that person I am today if it wasn't because of this lifestyle that I can like handle myself in a foreign country without my family and friends close that I can like drive a car, like even driving a damn car in another country. Is yeah. So- what is that like? What's how do you, cause it's funny. Cause I'm on the other side. Like, I think that the driving in Europe is like insanely scary. Yeah. But do you feel like that coming to the U S Oh, when I first came to California, I still to this day doesn't have a American driving license. Like I still am on, on my Swedish license and <laughs> I remember me and Ricard were just like test driving and he was like, you have to drive faster. You're driving too slow. Everyone drives so faster. And it's like five (laughs) lanes. And I'm like, my whole body's just shaking. I was like, I can't do this. It's too many lanes. And then all of a sudden it's a carpool lane. I was like, what the fuck is a carpool lane? And they would say, everything is just so new. But one thing that's really good here is that every kind of sign you guys have is, is, you know, tight out, like stop one way. In Europe, it's just a photo of a sign. It I doesn't know. say anything. Mm-hmm. So that kind of helped. Like, do not turn here on red. It, you know, yes. it kind of you can read, but in right. Europe, it's never like that. So that truly helps. But it was super scary. I was shaking <laughs> most of my time. You know what's so funny is like I feel like my brain has to like make the switch when I come back home too because there are certain things like in Europe, I don't know if it's every country, but I think most countries, like you can't turn right on red, but like yeah. in the U S you can turn right on yeah. red. So like, I'll come back home and I'm like sitting at the red light with my light signal on. I'm like, I'm like, Oh my God, I can go. I yeah. forgot I could do this. You know? <laughs> yes, you know, it's so many rules are different. So that's also one thing like, okay, I was really young and I was driving the car and let's just say accidents happens. Thank God, not very bad, but small stuff happened with the car and I was like telling the car like I don't care what car I have I just want it to be safe and help me get through this like I want all the safety features like I don't know like the best cameras around the car like I don't care sensors to help me get through this crazy traffic and if you go to California you know what I'm talking about but it's yes it's crazy but now it's it's working really well like nine years later I truly 
it works. <laughs> I know. Well, you're kind of like, well, Anaheim's kind of like that. I was actually born in Anaheim, but that's kind of that. Yeah. It's that in between though, it's really close to LA. So you probably get hit yep. with a lot of that backup, you know? And then, yeah, yeah there's, you definitely want to avoid that yep. freeway at certain times of the day. Otherwise it's like yeah. torture. Once I kind of learned where to go, it was easier, but looking at like the maps where to go was really hard and drive at the same time. So once you learn like, okay, now I'm going here and there, like first you learn how to drive the arena and then you learn how to drive through grocery store and then you kind of expand from there. Like, oh, now I'm going to the vet with the dogs. (laughs) (laughs) You kind of learn your roots and then you're expanding from there. But it was, it was so hard because you guys start driving when you're 16 and I feel like seeing teenagers driving the cars was just crazy for me because in Europe you learn when you're 18 mm-hmm. so for me it was like why why is it teenagers driving a car it was no it's just- terrifying and I think yeah. when you become an adult too, like at the time I'm like I'm 16 like I can yeah. offer a vehicle yeah. but now it's like my nephews who are 16 are getting their driver's license and I'm like what like they're <laughs> driving a car on the real road like this does not seem yeah. like this makes sense you know yeah it truly it really was that was like a culture shock like driving a car and just like small stuff like making phone calls like it, to insurance company i was like what's going on what are you talking about i don't know this stuff so luckily <laughs> we do have a lot of help from the teams and stuff but it, it it took a while i will say like maybe my third or my third year i was like okay n- now i know how to do this like getting into the groove yeah i know where to go i know what stuff to buy um but it definitely, it took time and you kind of have to be bold. You kind of have to be like, okay, let's do this. Like, you know, I'm walking outside the door. Like, you know, right. you kind of have to force yourself. And that's why I'm saying that I feel like I never would have been this strong if it wasn't because of this lifestyle. So it mm-hmm. also gives you so much thick skin, which I like. So 100%. And I think even yeah. in your relationship too, because it can test you. Like there's a lot of trying moments where, you're alone. And I know that you've been through a major trade, which we're going to get into, but like you go through so much and like, it really can put a huge strain on your, on your marriage. And like, my husband was like, when we like get done with this lifestyle, like, I feel like things are going to just feel like such a breeze because we've been through so much since being together. Like you just, I mean, right when you get in, it's like all of the unknowns each year after year to know it's the right person for you and that it's a good relationship because like you said it tests you so often and um I will never forget when Ricard came home in the middle of the night from a long road trip and I was you know laying on the nursery floor and in Daisy's room and she's been sick for days and I've been sick for days and he's been gone forever and I was just so exhausted my whole body was shaking and you know, and then shall they fly in suits always. And I kind of had blurry vision when he walked in the room. And I remember like, there he comes, like my knight in shining armor. (laughs) And he just kind of, you know, like picked me up and put me in the bed. And he just said like, okay, I love you. And I will take over now. Now you rest. And I remember I was just starting to ball my eyes out. I just started to cry because I felt like I was the worst mom and that that I kind of failed doing my part. Like here he comes exhausted from a long road trip, long flight, and then he kind of takes care of me. And I hate that feeling, feeling you're not doing enough to kind of hold your part in the team. And that's just who he is. And that's how I know, like, I can do this as long as I'm doing it with him because he truly always is my knight in shining armor. Right. Um, But it's kind of those moments in the beginning too, when we were dated, I was like, I would have never done this if it wasn't for him. So that's how you kind of know like, okay, I'm doing this because of pure love and that I'm supportive to you. And I know that once this is over, he's going to do exactly the same thing for me. Totally. Yeah. I think there's a lot of like pressure and guilt that we put on ourselves as moms Mm -hmm. to like, I don't know, sometimes I have the TV on too much when, you know, it's like, then I feel like, oh my gosh, the TV has been on too much. But also it's like, I don't have help. I have no family here. I have no friends here. I'm on all day with my kids. And sometimes I just need the break, but I do go through that spiral as well, where I'm like, you know, I feel like I'm not doing enough or I should be doing more 
we put a lot they of- do so much for us too exactly it's so hard even if he's had a really tough day at work it's just so hard to speak about your own day like they come home they lose a game and then it's just so hard for you to be like yeah i also had a rough day <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah you want to ask <laughs> yeah you want to ask about you know it's truly so hard to prioritize your own health and well-being in this lifestyle because everything is about the hockey 24/7 mm-hmm. like this month they have been playing every other day game and that's mm-hmm. never happened before that's and that's even been away and home um so it's just crazy to kind of, you know, prioritize your own health. And that's just like one thing when he came home in the middle of the night and I was just laying there shaking, trying to get the baby to sleep. And he just like took over and I'm like, oh, I'm failing you. Like, I never want to feel like I'm failing the support mm-hmm. to him because he do so much and he's exhausted too. So, but you truly, in the end of the day, you truly are. A team like mm-hmm. you become the strongest team ever um which is really really fun and cool to see what are some things that you do do to prioritize that because like you said it can it's easy for that to get kind of put on the back burner but I notice for me when I when that is on the back burner that's when I am like more impatient and I'm more you know bitter at things as opposed to if I am taking care of myself and like you know doing these things to find that happiness in this lifestyle so ever since Daisy came she's almost two now I've been really bad with it but I have lots of people coming to my house (laughs) so I have a trainer come to my house Daisy's napping so I can train with her which is amazing I also have my hairdresser that comes to my house while Daisy's <laughs> sleeping and napping. So those kind of stuff is very luxury for me to have those people come to my house. Um, but just like working out for me is, is just really, really nice and get another. It's just, I don't know. That's just one thing to prioritize my myself. But other than that, I... I try during off season during the summers. It truly is like the biggest blessing to have them off for that many months. Then Ricard is just like, whatever you want to do, just do you. Like, do you want to go on the weekend with your friends? Do that. Like, he doesn't care at all. He just wants me to have the best summer. So I think the off seasons are just the best. And just, yeah. I think that's me time. And so I want to talk about when you were pregnant and you got traded. Yeah. You yeah. were by yourself for 12 weeks. In a foreign yeah. country to you, tell yeah. me what that was like for you. So I think it always when I talk about it with people, I think it sounds worse than it was for me, but because Ricard was in the end of his era in Anaheim because he'd been he's been there for 10 years, it's been so long. He was the end of his contract, the team was rebuilding. And, you know, we haven't heard anything about contracts or anything. So we knew he would get traded. We knew 100% he's going to get traded. And And sorry to interrupt you, but what month was she born in? June. Okay. So so you guys were still in season. So they were not in season. No. Okay. They did go to playoffs, but it it cut short. It was... (laughs) It was but you definitely... were anticipating having to give birth in Anaheim. Yes. Yeah, so once we kind of knew he would get traded, we started right away. My, You know how it is with trades. You always, always, doesn't matter how your contract situation, you always have it in the back of your head. You kind of have to in this lifestyle. But we knew, we would, knew we would get traded and we kind of prepared in our heads like, okay, I was week 25 when he got pre- when he got pre- <laughs> <laughs> when he got traded. Interesting and twist to the story. I know, right? <laughs> and then, so funny. But then, <laughs> so I kind of prepared in my mind, like, okay, this is going to happen. What What is the plan? It's always nice to do a plan. Mm-hmm. And we planned that I would stay and that he would go. Uh, we just didn't know it would be Pittsburgh Penguins. That's five hours away. <laughs> flying so yeah yes. <laughs> I was like oh I wonder it will be Colorado that's a two-hour flight I will go visit you uh, but then we got some complications with the pregnancy uh, so my doctor really wanted me to stay in California and we have two dogs too <laughs> and we had a house they've been living in forever so 
once he got traded, I couldn't go with him. And my doctor said, no, I had the dogs. I said, I had the house and we decided that I will stay and just prepare for the baby and also kind of pack for the future. <laughs> I was nesting, but I was also packing. <laughs> yes. so it was so funny, but that was the hardest thing I probably ever done was saying goodbye to him and not knowing what I will see you again. Like sometimes it's nice for the road trips. Like, okay, I will see you Thursday. Goodbye. But saying goodbye, being that pregnant, not knowing when I can see you again. Mm -hmm. And it was still kind of COVID in the air. So I definitely would not want to fly. And my doctor didn't allow me to fly either to Pittsburgh. So I stayed and it ended up being 12 weeks. And when he, they lost the first round. So he was, or did they lost the second round? I actually can't remember. <laughs> Maybe it was, <laughs> no, I think it was the first round. They lost the first round, but it was still kind of COVID schedule. So everything was kind of delayed. Yeah. So he came home right after my birthday, May 18. But then when he came home, obviously we were, I was so sad that they lost the playoffs because he hadn't been in playoffs for so long. So I was so excited for him to be in playoffs. Um, so it was, first of all, really sad that they lost, but then excited for him coming home. So then he came home, he drive up the driveway, and I just got this weird feeling. While we're on the topic of pregnancy and childbirth, most of you guys know that I had a C-section in December of 2022, and that was like the first surgery I've ever had in my life, and I knew it would leave a scar, which I didn't really care about, but definitely as time as time has gone on, I have wanted to try to reduce the redness and just how it's a little bit raised. I want to just try to reduce the way it looks a little bit more. So I was doing a lot of different research on different products and I stumbled across the brand Nema. And I have been using their scar cream on my c-section scar every single night before I go to bed. And I kid you not, since I have been home, I have seen such a difference in the way that my scar looks visibly. I really, really love this company. I've been super impressed from the products to the packaging, and it's really a community of moms who are passionate about clean and vegan skincare for every phase of motherhood. All of their products are eco-friendly, vegan. They also have lotion and body wash and shampoo for babies. Everything is, is non-toxic. And like I said, I'm just really impressed with them. If you want to try out Nima, you can use the code Breaking the Ice Pod for 15% off of their products. I will link their website in the show notes. I was like, he should take a COVID test. Like, he should really take a COVID test uh, because the team has been coughing a little bit sick. I was like, can you, can you just before you come into the house, I know I haven't seen you in 12 weeks. Can you just take a yeah. quick COVID test? <laughs> Right, just to be safe. Yeah, and it was positive. It was positive. So we hadn't seen each other in 12 weeks, and he was positive for COVID. I was like, great. So he just turned around, went to a hotel. <laughs> yeah. Because I was so pregnant, and I definitely did not want to get... After all of that, you're like... Yeah. 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 Yeah, I was like, you're not coming in the house. I'm sorry. Um, so and then after two days, he was, he was negative and he came home. And just at that time, it kind of, I was trying so much, like, okay, just enjoy my time here in California. It's going to be my last, enjoy the house. But then sometimes I got this like super, super dark thoughts. Like what happens if I fall in the staircase? Like, will anyone know? And they can also, not everyone know the U.S. is a big country. Like his time was not my time. He was three hours ahead of me. So mm -hmm. once he, he went to bed, I was like eating dinner. So we didn't have contact all the time, even though we talk so much, we didn't. So those kind of dark thoughts hit me sometimes. Like what happens if I fell in the staircase? No one will notice. Right. And my family's in Sweden. My friends, like I have no one to call and what to do. And like, what happens if I go into labor? What, like, do I call an ambulance? Do I go there by myself? And it was just those kind of thoughts were so, so hard being you feel so small, like you mm -hmm. feel so, so small in a big country, far away from family, being pregnant by yourself. And the biggest support system you have is your significant other. And he's on the other side of the US. But looking back, I'm actually kind of like, oh, 
it was a good time. And that's what I knew too. Like, I know I'm going to look back at this time knowing it was a good time. So I always kind of thought about that, you know, and I knew it would be our last time in California. So I truly tried to enjoy every second of it. And it yeah. actually is a cute time. It was more the when he came back, I gave birth. And then the free agency, he signed a contract with Pittsburgh and then we needed to move. So that move postpartum was actually way harder. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, I was going to say, I feel like there's like definitely perks of you staying behind too. Like you got to stay with the doctor, you got to stay in your space that you've created that you're like comfortable in. And yep. so for you, there wasn't a lot of change, obviously, besides not yep. seeing your husband, but just probably knowing that, you know, he would be back for the birth most likely, um, you know, was a comforting feeling for sure yeah and it's always like a plan with that too people always say like oh do they let you go and give birth with you and they do they definitely give the guys time off and be able to give birth with you and then the next day they're off again yeah. so. Then they leave. <laughs> <laughs> then they leave. Yeah. Uh, so we definitely had a plan for that too like okay you know like you will be there so that was always in the back of my head like you will be there first. I was thinking like, should I go back to Sweden and give birth there? And knowing that I will have my family, my, you know, my mom close, but then that will be like a 12 hour flight day for Ricard. Then he definitely will not be there for the baby if he's still right. in the playoffs. So that's why I stayed in California too, because I knew that will be the biggest chance of him making it. Yeah. And did you have a good experience giving birth in the U S uh, both? Yes. And no, my doctor wasn't available <laughs> okay so uh he was out of town so that was really heartbreaking for me because we became really close um so both yes and no um I ended up get, getting induced so it was a long labor it was a really okay long labor. but I'm thankful for my strong body and my Pilates training <laughs> it kind of prepared me for that moment yeah but both yes and no but Daisy was all good. She was all healthy. That was the most important for us. And then with that kind of postpartum life in California, we were at the same time bringing home a baby. We were also packing mm. boxes. How quickly and did then, you have to leave at postpartum? So we wanted to go back to Sweden and, you know, travel and visit family and friends, but we didn't realize how long it will take for her to get a passport, social security. And mm -hmm. also not everyone know this, but visas expires when your contract expires. Mm -hmm. So Ricard's work visa was expiring. And then my visa as a spouse also expires. So we didn't have a visa, which was very stressful. So we needed to get going if we didn't, <laughs> you know, sign. We needed to get out of the country. But then Ricard signed with Pittsburgh Penguins a day before the free agency opened. Um, he signed a six-year contract. So once he signed oh, wow. that, we just like, okay, let's let's get going. So we already obviously have been packing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for a long time. Yeah. Um, so then we were just waiting for Daisy's passport, but then we also knew we didn't have a visa. And mm -hmm. after COVID visa appointments at embassies are really hard. Yeah. So penguins really needed to work day and night to get us in at an embassy. And that, do you say embassy? Is that how you Yeah, embassy. It? Mm -hmm. The embassy. Yeah. We have to travel outside U.S. to get the visa. We can't do it inside U.S. We have oh, to cross It is the like that in Europe too. Like if you don't yeah. have one and you have to apply for one, you like technically you're supposed to leave the country. Yeah. So all of that being postpartum, having a baby, we needed to pack up our house, move to Pittsburgh, but we also need to go to Canada. Okay. And get our visas. It was it was a it was a crazy move from California to Pittsburgh only because of the visa situation. But right. then Penguins got us appointment there. We go there and they tell us like, okay, this is just a day thing. You only go to Ottawa during the day and Ottawa and, and Pittsburgh is really close, the cities, even though the border is there. Yeah. Um, so Ricard's mom came from Sweden to help us with the move. We took a private plane from California because we needed so much stuff with us because the moving truck was a month away at least. Right. Like the moving from California to Pittsburgh is, is a far move. So the moving truck with all our stuff was probably a month like away. Okay. And you needed it so now needed... because you had to go back to Sweden. Yeah. 
Yeah. So we needed to take a private plane from California to Pittsburgh with our baby and Ricard's mom. And the next day when we landed, we need to go to Canada to get our visas. And that was a commercial flight. So we're like, okay, they said, they said it was only going to take a day. So let's leave Daisy here. That's only like four months. And I was breastfeeding with Ricard's mom because we doesn't want her to go in the airport and go to Canada. With Ricard's mom, I will pump. She will stay here for the day. We'll be back like the same day, but late at night. Mm-hmm. We come there to the embassy. It was like such a long process. Like my boobs were hurting. I was breastfeeding, you know, standing there the whole day. I was like, I just want to get home. Like this, it took forever. And then we come up to the line and Ricard get denied. He gets denied. Why? <laughs> it, was, it was something in the system. He just gets denied. And I was there. I was like, excuse me. They were like, yeah, this is, uh, we need to send this to Washington. It can take everything from 60 to 90 days. <gasps> and I was or probably just sunk. I just like, I started to scream, cry. Because I was like, my baby is in the U.S. with my mother-in-law. I'm breastfeeding. Yeah. Everyone can hear this. And you know, you've been to the embassy. It's like, it's a huge line, people waiting. There was so much people in the waiting room. And I was like, I need to get back. And he was like, I mean, you can always go to the border and try to cross it and tell that you have a daughter in the U.S. I was like, what is going on here? Like, what is going on here? Like, it was just crazy. Um so we go back to the hotel and the team is working day and night and we got it fixed i think in three days but think about leaving your child like for three days four months i was you just stay there for three days yeah so they ended up depending on doing yeah the and the team ended up fixing it they helped us and the embassy helped us much faster but normally it's like a 90-day process and i would have been both me and ricard would have been stuck in Canada, then obviously we would have tried to fly Daisy over with his mom. But because they only said it will take a day, we thought it was easier for Daisy to stay because we just landed from California. Right. So we're like, Daisy can just stay with his mom in Pittsburgh. And we go quick over the day to Ottawa, get the visas, and then we go quick back. And adding on to that, we just got to Pittsburgh. We just got into an apartment. We had no stuff. Like, Ricardo's mom. just feeling so scattered. Yeah, like Ricard's mom was left, like we just left her in the apartment with all these Amazon packages and our baby. And we were like, <laughs> okay, we're just gone for the day. We were getting this visa so we can get back to you, Daisy. And then they tell us that it got denied and it might take 90 days. I was like, Ricard, I'm going to cross this border. Like, I don't care. <laughs> oh my <laughs> it was gosh. Crazy. It was just crazy. Like all those kind of stuff, like visa situations, um, mm-hmm. you know, like stuff like that happens and then it's just so hard being far away with help and yes. Ricardo's mom she needed to go home too so it was kind of on a ticking schedule and right. I think like even when we oh yeah when we were supposed to go back when we finally got our visas our plane was canceled because of storm of so course. the team needed to get a car service for us and drive us from Ottawa to Penguins and it was like a six-hour drive to be able to be home in time for Ricard's mom to go home. <laughs> it's just, oh. it's just crazy. Um, so just that kind of the trade how it goes. postpartum move, we moved into apartment in Pittsburgh. And then from the apartment, we moved to a condo while we were waiting for our house. And then from the condo, we moved to the house. So I think Daisy, before she was one, she lived at like five different places. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know it's hard and still your postpartum and you're like just got a baby and I was like what just happened like what totally just happened yeah how has this lifestyle changed for you since having a child in it so it definitely has given me more anxiety of being lonely with the child like stuff you know this too like stuff always happens when the guys are gone like the kids always end up getting sick when the guys mm-hmm. are gone on a long road trip um rushing to the emergency emergency room by yourself is so scary so stuff like that in this lifestyle is really hard being by yourself like yeah. daisy she fell and hurt her on the living room table and she pushed her three teeth upwards uh, Ricard oh just came off the airplane like he just came off the plane it always happens when they're flying too 
Yeah. I was by myself with my friend and I cut my thumb, my upper, like half of my thumb went off <laughs> because I was cutting, you know, they always sip toy, like those toys from Target. They always have zip ties. Yes. So I was like opening a toy and then my half of my thumb came with it. And it always happens when they're flying. Stuff always happens on the airplane. Like yeah. trying to get a hold of a card, like, you know, so that's that's the hardest. Being by yourself with a kid when stuff like that happens and I can't call my mom to come over or help me. Mm-hmm. So having a baby in the side side by yourself is really tough because stuff always happens when you're by yourself. Do you feel um, like you had to depend on like other girls in the community that also have kids to like find it, your, your it, sanity in, in it? It truly is uh, like the biggest blessing to have this community. We are an older team with lots of kids and you always can ask the moms and this is like such an amazing team and supportive group of women with moms too. Uh, so that is like so helpful. We also, one of my closest friends that are Swedish is in this team. So her and I are super close and we have each other. So that is like everything. Um, so you definitely depend and lean on each other, like a lot, the girls. So it's, sure. it's amazing how strong we can be together. Um, and also kids brings people together. You kind mm-hmm. of, it's amazing how you can get new friend, friends because of the kids too. So I agree. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's just awesome. I love, I love having Daisy like kind of a part of this journey too, for her to like, see, she's obviously obsessed with hockey. She kind of gets brainwashed with it, <laughs> but she, it's just so fun to see her being like hockey hockey go to daddy's game go yes go go, go. so it, I know one day me and her is going to sit by the day like having dinner in Sweden and talk about this adventure together so it truly is like a blessing I love having her with me it's like yeah. my little meanie best friend too oh I know I feel the same way I think it like it's so empowering even though the challenges that come with having a baby away from home, but like, like you have had two of my babies away from home. And yeah, even though it was like such, such a challenge in my life, I feel like looking back, wow, like that's pretty unreal that like all of us, I mean, for the most part, unless you, you know, have the luxury of doing it when you're in the summer or whatever, in your home country and where you feel like the most comfortable, I think it's really cool. And also it is a sacrifice having a baby away from home, raising a baby away from home. And one day when our kids are older and they look back on it, they're going to be like, wow, like my mom yeah. is cool. So yeah, yeah. That, that's what I'm back and be like, I lived in the U S I was born in California. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, she's going to love it. I know. And it also gives her opportunities. Like she's born here. She has like dual citizenship, so she can do whatever she wants to do with that. When she grows older, she can go to school here. Oh, and wow. It's also really cool if she wants. So How I do don't you, want to get that automatically. Because <laughs> I so, people ask me that about my kid. They're like, do they get dual? I don't really know how it works. I think they can. But um, I don't know how it works in Europe. But no, I think they do. I think they can. Be, but for us, because Daisy's born in the U.S., she get dual. Uh, automatically. So, yeah. Wow, that's yeah. really cool. And then she also gets Swedish because her parents are Swedish. But it was right. actually kind of hard to get the <laughs> Swedish yeah. uh, citizenship, the passport. It was kind of hard. But now when we travel home to Sweden, she didn't have her Swedish passport. She's only allowed to be in Swe- Sweden certain days. And I was like, hello, we're Swedish. We're yeah. coming back to our <laughs> country. She's yeah. Swedish too. Um, <laughs> but that was also scary during COVID when everything shut down. I know a lot of Swedish people that was stuck in the u.s because mm. you can get a passport for your newborn to get home to sweden so yeah that's why i was like i need this swedish passport really fast like i right. just really wanted it right away but that's what i think about too like it's such a blessing for her that she's born here and got the opportunity to whenever she grows older if she wants to study here she can do that obviously we don't want that <laughs> Because right. it will be far away from us and it will be so expensive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's like a really cool adventure. Um, and we'll see how long we will stay here and how long, if she will end up going to school here. We don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We'll see what happens in the future. 
So you guys obviously have had two really long contracts, which I'm sure yep. is amazing. Like I feel like amazing. that's all that anyone can hope for. Like I know just be there for more than one season and know what's that's what I, in their lives. Yeah. That's why I'm always like, I'm blessed. Like I, this is nice. Like that's I nice. never truly understood how crazy that some people actually move every year. Mm-hmm. Um, so once that's why I'm always just so thankful. Yeah. For everything and how, how everything has worked out and just, all the experiences we've been through and all the places we've seen and traveled. It's just, yeah, it's been great having longer contracts, but we'll see. So do you guys buy a home then or do you rent? So once he signed this, we met when Ricard was still in a rookie contract. Okay. So when he signed his longer contract in Anaheim, um, we just knew right away, like, we need to buy a house because it's so, you know, this, it's so expensive in California. Mm-hmm. So we were like, okay, you have a six year contract. Renting is not an option because it's like so expensive. Let's just, we actually ended up building a house. Um, let's just build this house, move into this house. And if we end up just staying two years or three years, because always in the back of your head, you're like, you might get traded. You might get traded. <laughs> That's how you have to think. So we're like, if we just end up staying there for three years, then it will be awesome. Then we will just, you know, gain something from it. So we en- ended up buying a house and we stayed there for, f- I think it was like five years or four and a half. And we like doubled the amount that we bought it for. Wow. <laughs> Which is crazy. crazy. <laughs> so every year it was like, okay, this is great. We're not yeah, selling yet, good you know? <laughs> yeah. So that's the same thing with it in Pittsburgh. Like, okay, right away when we get there, we just buy a house. But then the inventory here in Pittsburgh is lower. Like it's not that much houses available. So, and definitely nothing available renting. Um, so that's why you're like, you have to buy a house. Right. That's a lot of people at Instagram always asking me like, what about the house? I'm like, yeah. what do you mean about the house? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you selling the house? I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, right. Oh. But yeah. I know a lot of people make a business out of it too. Like we have friends that have been staying at multiple places that still owns the house and just keep renting them Rent out. It out. For, for us, it was kind of like, okay, let's just close this chapter. It was an amazing mm-hmm. journey. Like Ricard was there. Like his first game was like, 2012 like he was so young when he started and he had been there forever so for us it was like okay let's just close this chapter sell the house yeah back. <laughs> yeah okay that's amazing that's good to know and I mean that's it's cool though too because you can actually get settled in yeah. your space because that yeah. I think that's that's hard about seasons when people do have those short contracts it's like mm-hmm. you don't fully want to like buy all the stuff for the place or like put stuff on the walls but then it's like I don't know so that's still I still think like that I still never get too comfortable even though we sign a longer contract with some no moving clause I'm always in the back of my head like okay maybe we're not buying outdoor furniture this year yet you know (laughs) I'm not putting up storage shelves yet you know so I'm, (laughs) I'm still never getting too comfortable in the back of my head because in the end of the day, the main reason why we're here, like a lot of people ask me this, like, oh my God, you're going to miss California, like the beach. I was like, the reason why we are in the U.S. is because of hockey. We're here to play hockey. We're here to win and work hard to follow his dream and goals. The beaches can come later in life. We can yeah. have that later. Um, so that's always been like the main goal for me and the main goal for Ricard so everything else environmentally is just a bonus the fact that we got to live in California for me it still feels unreal and so nice and we got to do and see all the things we got to do but in the end of the day we're here because of hockey so yeah. everything around that is just a bonus that we get to live and see and do all these amazing things and it's a really cool thing to look back at but yeah, I know a lot of people was like, is that hard for you? Like moving from California to Pittsburgh, I was like, I'm from Sweden. I'm from north of Sweden. So Yeah, I'm, I'm where are you from in Sweden? Sweden? It's called Sheleftio. Okay. So it's really far up. It's like, I, I always say that I'm born in the snow. I love cold weather, okay. <laughs> which is crazy. Okay. So I never, I think for those six years, I probably went to my pool area 
one or two times. That's <laughs> how little I enjoy the warm weather. And everyone knows this too. That's why they always laugh when they hear that really? I live in oh California because I'm, oh, because north of Sweden is so cold. There's so much snow. And I was like always one of those wearing hats. I never tanned. I was like scared of the sun. I hate being like warm and sweaty. So yeah, I was actually excited getting seasons back when we, when we signed with penguins. I was like, this is yeah. going to be nice. Like have winter weathers again. Like we're okay. outside all the time with days. And you probably know this that in Europe too, that people are outside a lot. All the time. Compared. It'll be yeah. pouring rain. And I'm like, people would never be like, just riding their bike yeah. back home in the U S like if it was pouring rain and here it's just, or in Europe, it's just everywhere, yeah. which I think is great because it's gotten me outside more. And I'm like, Hey, I still need to get outside even if the weather like sucks or whatever. And it, I always feel better. And people like in Europe, they have their kids nap outside in all yeah. different they weather do. types, which yeah. I think a lot of Americans think is really cool. Yeah. And we're outside all the time. And people always look at us like, we're always by ourselves in the park. Like it's like pouring snow and people were looking at us from their windows. Like, what are those people doing? And I'm like, hello, we're Swedish. That's why yeah. we're outside. <laughs> <laughs> I always feel like I have to explain to everyone there is we're Swedish. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. Okay. Well that leads me into like the most asked question when I put up the question box on Instagram, which yeah. was what are the main cultural differences between and well, I think we'll kind of end on this note. And I think it's funny too, to talk about this, but like what the main cultural differences are for you, just, it can be funny stuff. It can be stuff that shocked you between Sweden and the U S. So first of all, you guys are so nice. Like people are so nice here, how they open the door for you. We lived in an apartment complex in California my first year and people were so nice in the elevator. And I was like, why is this person talking to me? Like, why are you saying, hi, how are you? We don't do that in Sweden. <laughs> we don't open the yeah. door for people, okay? Like, I find people being so nice. Like, hi, how are you? Good morning. So that was one thing. I was like, wow, people are so nice there. And did and you like that? Moment. In the beginning, I didn't because I thought they will, like, kidnap me or something. I was like, why are you <laughs> <laughs> and like everyone when they were walking they were like hi good morning and I was like oh is that how you do like in Sweden you look down you look down when people yeah. when you yeah. walk past a person so that was my first thing like wow people are so nice and like gentlemen's and stuff like that and and Can then I a question and, and to to butt in I feel like Europeans have a misconception that American people are like a-holes oh Really? I've heard that so many times. Yeah. Where they're just like, oh, like, you know, like they just like don't like Americans. And I'm like, why? Like, why do they think that? Because either maybe they've just never been and like they just see maybe stuff on TV that makes them think yeah. people are it just. It might be here. politic stuff too. Oh, yeah, could so be. Like that makes Sweden, sense. Oh, like Europe, Europe is so involved in you guys' politics and stuff. And maybe um, that's why like, oh, stuff like that happens. Yeah. So maybe. It might be something like that, but I feel like people also know how nice you guys are. Like even going to a restaurant here is so different uh, because you tip here. We don't tip in Sweden necessarily. So I find yeah. people at restaurant being so nice and refilling your drink. They definitely do not refill drinks in Europe. <laughs> like running to get you a Diet Coke. Like I barely finished my Coke and it's a new Coke there. So I find just people being, especially when we moved to Pittsburgh too, like, wow, people are so nice here. Um, that was one thing. I also find that people talk faster and louder, mm -hmm. especially from where I'm from in Sweden. We talk very slow and it's just really <laughs> slow. Yeah. And then when I came here, everyone was like, da, 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 like talking yeah, with yeah. a high pitch. Yeah. So that was funny in the beginning too. I was standing there and I was like, oh, everything goes so fast and they talk so loud. I'll never be able to keep up with that. But look at me today. I'm talking very fast. <laughs> Here I am. Um, so that was one thing. And then just like common stuff, like the water, obviously in Europe, we drink from the sink. We have nice water there. The food is not as good as European food. Uh, so that's something we really doesn't like um, because we do care about what we put in our bodies. So that was a huge change to coming here and seeing 
the food and just be able to cook with what you have here. Um, so that's like, that's one of the things I, I mainly thought about when I first came here that you guys are just really nice <laughs> and always asking, how are you? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah. The food and the water and yeah, just stuff like that. What do you think about being able to walk into like a CVS and grabbing the medicine that you need? Oh, that was hard in the beginning. <laughs> that was really hard in the beginning. I was like, what's going on? What is all this? Like, do I die if I take a pill now? Or like um, <laughs> stuff like that was really hard. But today, I know you talk about this in your channel too. Like today, you truly take the best from Sweden and the best from US when you come to different countries. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, Ricard, don't forget the timeline works really well. And Daisy, let's pack that. Right. So you truly find your stuff that you really love and yeah. then the opposite. Um, but it was truly so hard in the beginning. Like, it's just like so much stuff that I was like, what is this? Like, what's going on? And yeah. The kind of drug industry here is like so much bigger too like yeah so crazy so there's yeah, not as many like regulations on stuff so that's no. probably nerve-wracking yeah. for you because there are in europe you know so there i think there's pros and cons like i've definitely had my like frustrating moments where i've like needed medic medication or something but it's like a challenge to get it in europe you either have to get like a prescription or you gotta go talk to the pharmacy for like something just like a simple medicine that i need yeah. But I also respect the fact that it is so highly regulated because then you really yeah. know like what you're actually putting in your body. Because I think yeah. like, especially with social media this day and age, you just like learn so much about stuff where it's a little overwhelming. You're like, oh my God, is this, I've been taking this kind of thing like my whole life. Like, is, am I okay? Like, you know, yeah. like there's so much information out and there. And then in Europe, they say it's not okay. So it's like so many different right. things, but that's why again, I truly love this community and your podcast and just follow you in Europe. And I know you had Haley on your podcast and she's been in Sweden. So we always been talking. Yeah. She could, ask, she could ask me like the funniest questions, like what pasta sauce do you guys use in Sweden? That's similar <laughs> to this pasta sauce in US. And I was like, okay, it's probably this and that. So yeah. it's like even those smallest and the funniest things. And she would like when she went from us to sweden she will bring a certain things and the things she will bring i will bring from sweden like a taco seasoning i yeah. love swedish taco seasoning i think all mm -hmm. the swedish people do so people we will always bring the taco seasoning and right just so many different things like in sweden we're huge on sauces we have a sauce that's called bene sauce that we eat to everything. So okay. sometimes even in the beginning when we moved, we were like, let's bring some bene sauces. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it truly is the funniest thing how you like, and that's again, why I love this community, seeing you guys being in Europe. And did you talk one time about laundry machines? Yes. Yes, because I love the US laundry machines. Yes. Yeah. They're very different. Like just yeah. even having to like unload that big or, or the dryer. Do you know the what I'm talking about? You have to un pull the thing out, dump the water into the sink, push, put it back in. And then with the, uh, you have to take all the lint out each and every time, or you do have to take the lint out here, but it's like, you don't like it drains on its own, you know, <laughs> like you don't I have know. to do. Trust me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Your clothes was, actually dry here. <laughs> it was so funny because the laundry machines here are, first of all, they're enormous. They're so big. Like, I swear I can fit 25 towels without a problem. And then I go back to Europe and, like, we have good laundry machines in Europe. And then I'm like, I fit five towels. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's one thing I truly, truly miss during the summers is my laundry machines. And when you were talking about the dryer and that water, I was just laughing because that's so Swedish that we have to empty that water. And right. I was dying. That was so funny. I love seeing stuff like that. And side note, did you know that I've lived in Sweden? No. Did we have this conversation? No. What team did you are going to die. I don't know if I'll buy. I mean, people know I've talked about it before, but I lived in Tingsgrid. Do you know where that is? Oh, a small town. Yes. There was like 2000 people there. That was our first European contract that we ever took. It was an Elsvenskan. How do you, what do you like? What is your thought about Sweden then? Like what is your biggest takeaway from Sweden? So 
we were close to like a couple really ni- like we were close to Viqua and I'm not saying it right and then Carl's Krona which we both liked those two towns yeah, and yeah they're bigger like cities. three or four times a week because like there was nothing going on have you heard of Boreas that grocery store it's like what Tingsgren is like. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like known for that. Like people would yeah. just like hang out at the grocery store. There was nothing to do where we lived. So it was definitely a hard adjustment just because of like where we're like, I'm from California and my husband's from Chicago. So like we're used to like things going on. So yeah. um, I remember um, during the when American NHL was in a lockout. And one player in Anaheim was telling me that he was going to a grocery store in Sweden. And back in the days, you needed to put money in the cart. You don't have to put any more there? No. So back in the day in Sweden, you had to have like a, like a cent or like money yeah. to put in the cart to be able to get the cart and go into the grocery store. So he went as an American for the first time and he was like to the grocery store and he was like, trying to pull out the cart but he couldn't get it out because it's locked if you don't put money in it yeah so just like small things like that just made me laugh so much and it's that's just always the funniest to talk about like europeans going to us and then americans yes. going to sweden but also every country in europe is so different it is it's well different. austria and slovenia you still have to do that with the coin yeah no, it's, oh it's, just, it's just the funniest, but that's, again, why I love this community and how we kind of can laugh about it and see totally. that we have total different experience and I'm longing to go back to Sweden and you're longing to go back to US, but yeah, yeah, I know. And I think it's just like your comfort zone. I think yeah. like people crave that because it's like what they know and what they yeah. they are used to. And I think that's like normal and part of yeah. the lifestyle and I think it does make you appreciate like where you're from and your home too, because, you know, you can still enjoy living away from home, but at the end of the day, like going home is always that place that you feel like, you know, home within yourself too. So it makes you appreciate it for sure. No, I agree. And it's also like, just like we talked about earlier that I feel like your relationship with your husband just grows stronger. And because I kind of felt like when I moved to, you don't lose a lot of friends, but you kind of lose a strong connection to some of your friends because it's hard to keep up Mm -hmm. and maintain friendship from that far away. Mm -hmm. And that's where I felt like I, me and Ricard grew even stronger Mm -hmm. when I kind of lost a little bit with my friends. I feel like, okay, Ricard is truly my best friend today. Yeah. But yeah, at the end of the day, I'm just like so proud of Ricard every single day. Like, you know, they got so much things going on and he doesn't say much about it at all, but he like kind of still works his ass off and still keeps being gentle and full of love and just always there when you need him. So he's Aww. just like the strongest man I know. And I just love doing this with him. You're so sweet. That's so nice. Like, shout out. Like, make sure you shout listen because you got lots yeah. of compliments. He's probably not going to listen. <laughs> or he will listen, but then he doesn't say anything. <laughs> oh, well, thank you so much for coming on the Thanks podcast. for having I'm me. Happy we finally got to do this. I feel like we've been, like, trying to do this for a year. I know. And I'm happy we got to sit down and connect. And yeah. if anyone wants to follow you on Instagram, what yeah. is your handle you can just plug it it's my name emily raquel you will find me there i feel like i share a lot on swedish but i do share a lot of english too it's like here and there like i definitely want the girls is in the team is always complaining of me like stop speaking swedish <laughs> you're like who i am like, okay, okay. i'm just in <laughs> english talking now but yes. oh my god i will never talk on english on my insta stories but yeah you can <laughs> definitely follow me there i feel like um before I was super personal on my Instagram, I shared a lot, but now it's like, I don't know if I can do it anymore. Like, you know, a lot of fans follows you, but I do try to stay like really personal, but it's hard. It's hard at the same time. I think you do a great job. I like following okay, you. Good. Even though it's okay, in Swedish, good. I still like to see what you're I doing. And I, you know, <laughs> all you have to do is just click the little translate button at the top. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it. those those kind of scares me too. Like, imagine if it translates the wrong way, and I'm like, no, that's not what I'm yeah, saying. No, no, so not. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is your baby still asleep? Yes. For your kids? 
Yeah. So That's mm-hmm. awesome. She fortunately takes like, a, well, she's 15 months. So she's still taking oh. like a solid three hour nap for me usually, yeah. which is like amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. 